Welcome to the Devworm channel and today we are going to be creating an enemy for episode 6 of the how to create an action RPG series in which I teach you step by step how to make an amazing RPG game in Goda. But before we get started I just want to ask if you could please go and hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video as it helps you to push this series to more inspiring game developers so they can also learn how to make their own Godot games just like you. But let's get started with adding a working enemy so that we have some creatures to fight in our game. Okay, so to create a slime or an enemy, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and just create a brand new scene. We're going to go with an, uh, another node because we need a kinematic body. Any body that moves a player, an enemy, a car, anything that like that is going to be a kinematic body 2D. And we can just name this slime. Now, we're going to need a bunch of different stuff. So for visuals, we're going to go with an animated sprite. For collisions, we're going to go with a collision shape 2D. And we're also going to need a nice area 2D with a collision shape in it. And so the area 2D, we can rename this to like detection area because detection underscore area. And then, yeah, because this is going to be like the detection area when we... You know, like when the player enters the area, we need to know when the player enters the area so the slime can chase the player. So it's not always chasing the player, only when the player is in this area, right? Animated sprite, we can go with the frame, new frame. We can just name this the uh, bounce, bounce animation, no, walk animation. Nice simple walk animation, even though the slime is gonna be pretty bouncy. We can go over here, we can take all these frames, so just in that order, add four frames, and now we have a slime. We can move this up a little bit, like that, something like that. So the slime part is towards the bottom of the slime. So when we have Y sorting, everything works. Collision shape can be something small like that. And the detection area needs to be pretty big, right? Like it can be like that, something like that. Okay, that looks good. So now what we need is a script. So we'll go to our slime, we'll make a slime.gd. We can remove all of this stuff and we need some variables, right? We need the basic, basic variables like var speed equals uh, 25, that's fine our motion equals a vector 2.0 so these are all the super super basic and then we also need a bar player and we can equal this to null because okay yeah we can save the we can save the scene into scenes save so what this is here is var player equals null we'll, we're gonna change this because in the detection area we can just do this now so we'll go to our detection area we can go up to node we can send some signals so whenever a body enters the slime right when a body enters then we want the body or we want the player to equal to the body right and the body is whatever body enters and that's going to be the player so when the player enters it's going to do this right and this is also going to pick up trees rocks stuff like that but once we set up our layer systems correct, it's only going to pick up the player. So the body will always equal the player. So we'll have a player whenever there's something in the detection area, right? So we can go to a body exited. And then when there's, when the body or so when the player exits, then we want it to be equal to null because we don't want the slime to be chasing anything, right? So that's all set up. Now we need a simple physics process delta function and we can do motion equals vector 2.0 and if player which means so if a player is in the area right so if there is a player then we want motion to equal the position dot direction and i'll explain this here in a second two our player which is whatever's in the area right and we want the position and then we want to go at that object which is we want to go towards the player at the speed right so what this does is if there is a player in the area 
then we'll go towards that player that's in the area, right? If there is nothing here, then we're not going to move. We're not going to go anywhere. And motion equals position dot direction to player because motion equals the position, which means our slime will be moving towards because our position will always be changing and our position will be changing towards the player position, right? Because we always want to be getting closer to the direction to the player dot position. So this position will always get closer to this position at this speed. If that makes any sense. I hope that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I don't know if I explained it well. If I didn't, let me know in the comments and I can help you out there. But motion equals move and slide because we want visuals and we need this for the uh, for Godot to show that our slime is moving on screen. Now, if we were to play, it's going to somewhat work, but it's also not exactly going to work, right? Well, it's not going to work because we didn't add a slime. But if we go, we click the little chain icon, we go and find our slime.tsc in. We can spawn our slime, we can spawn it right here. And if we play the game, you can see almost nothing works, but... You can see it follows our player. We have no animation, but then you can see it gets all messed up, right? And it's it just like, it's all messed up. And do you know why this is? It's because right here we have a collision shape on the tree. We have a collision shape on this tree. And this slime is picking up all these collision shapes. So our player, it's, we want it to only pick up our, pick up our player, right? Cause it's gonna go, it's gonna stop. Cause it's this collision shape exited. So the body equals nothing now. Right, so it's a big mess, but we can fix this with the layers. I also want to have the animation. So we'll go to our slime. We can go to inspector, uh, animated sprite, and we can just put on playing. And then now we have our animation. If we play it, yeah, right. So now we have our animation. And also, if you're wondering how I have the collision shapes, so yeah, you can see our, our slime goes over here because it detected this collision shape, right? So if you're wondering how I have the collision shapes on, you can go up to debug and you can toggle them on and off, right? Now they're off, so now we're not gonna see them. But now the way to fix this, I'm gonna turn those back on, but the way to fix this is we wanna go to project, project settings. We can go down here to uh, 2D physics, down here at the bottom of the general. And then we have layers, right? So layer one can be environment. Layer two can be player, and layer th three can be our enemy, right? And then now we gotta go to our enemy, our, we gotta go to our slime and our player and set these up. So, first of all, our player, we want our player, collision, we want our player to, we want it to be at layer one, because, well, well, okay, wait, hold up. Let's think about this real fast. So we want it to be at mass. So, which means this is, it's going to interact with all three, right? And then that should be good, right? So this is the environment. This is the player. And this is the enemy. And this is the environment. Okay, hold up. So. Yeah, we go to, we set this at two because we want the layer. This is the player layer. If it, if it's going to show, it's probably not going to show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the player, right? And then we want the player to interact with the enemy. We want the player to also interact with the player. This doesn't really matter. You can have this on or off. doesn't matter. And we also want it to interact with the environment, right? But we go to the slime. We go to our area 2D because look, we want the slime. Up here, we want the slime. We want it to be interacting with the environment, right? So we'll leave that. Don't even mess with the slime at the very, very top. If you go down here to the area 2D, the detection area, you can go to collisions. And we want this detection area to only, we only want it to detect the player, right? So we'll untick the environment and we'll only put it on the player. And this area is the, the enemy, right? So now if we go and we play, now we can see, you see the tree up there? It doesn't matter though, right? 
doesn't matter at all. The slime will only follow the player now, no matter what. Like, the rock's in there now. We're about to get this other tree in there. It doesn't matter. It will only follow the player ever. And then once we get out of the zone, it will stop. But once we go back in the zone, it will only follow the player. Right? So that's how layers work. Now, if we go to debug, untick the visible collision shapes, and we play the game, you can see, yeah, well, it doesn't really make a change, but the, the slime follows the player. It looks nice, looks cool, looks good. It stops the player once you get out to a certain range, and you can always go to the slime. You can always just increase this, right, and decrease it however you want. Go to the world you can kind of see how big it is and we'll put like we'll put the slime like down here for now on the pathway and that is how you make a working enemy in the in goda so it works but in the next video we're going to be making the slime hurt the player we're going to be making the player be able to hurt the slime so yeah next video is going to be about combat and i think it's going to be very very fun so make sure you tune in to that that is going to be for episode 7. But thank you so much for watching episode 6 of the RPG series. And I cannot wait to work on combat for the player and the slime. So we have some more entertaining stuff to do in our RPG game, right? The main part of an RPG game. But thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode. And until next time, have a safe and a wonderful rest of your day.